Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we really have a show today. I'm going to be short and sweet to this piece. But the bottom line is that, as you know, my hat, as I indicated before, I want these vets to go out there and get your benefits. So go down to the VA and make sure you get those benefits. You know what I'm talking about. Families, cousins, friends, or whatever, get those vets down to the VA, okay? They can deal with the homeless now. They can do a number of things. There's still a few of us that are still out there. They say the latest count was about 400 or so. But the bottom line is it's going to take some time. So do that, okay? Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to deal with an issue that we're all concerned with. From, a, from an international standpoint, we are, we are identified now as racist. I mean, even at the United Nations, they're make it, making it very clear that, hey, they're really concerned about and bothered by, by the amount of racism we have in this country at this point in time. Well, okay, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> but guess what, though? The definition of racism, in all due respect, comes back from, i.e., that civil war mm. between the North and the South, mm. where race was basically the supposedly cause of the war. I mean, in, in, in a lot of other books, it was economics. Mm. Always the economics aspect. Always of it. economics. But it, uh, it has always been identified with race. And when you start thinking about race, you think about black Americans or black African Americans. Okay, uh, the slaves were a little bit different, whatever. But the bottom line is that it, it's about black folks. Okay, mm. and so now we got the deal, and then we got there's a, there's a lot of history there. And in all due respect, I can't share with you uh, the, the more specific issues because I, I didn't get it in school myself. Mm. It wasn't in the books. It That's wasn't right. it wasn't being taught like anything else. There was no demand that the teachers, when they went to got their, their teacher certificate had to actually go through a course, if you will, to understand what that history is about. So we've been falling short. And naturally, the older we get, <laughs> the less we, <laughs> we know. Mm -hmm. And the fact we, 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 we've been, because we're kind of creatures of our exposure That's in right. many ways. Yeah. And if we've been exposed to the fact that this is just sitting on the side mm -hmm. forever and ever and ever, and when you get to be about 79 years old like myself, had I not gotten in the Marine Corps, I'd been having some problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in all due respect, that, that's probably the closest place that we've had uh, assimilation. In, from the military standpoint, because mm -hmm. you were forced, because it was either the rank on your collar or the rank on your silk, and so. But the bottom line, there were some problems there too, because I can I can cite some incidents that happened to me when I was even in the Marine Corps. But the fact of the matter is, it was the closest thing that we had in this country. Mm -hmm. But now today is that we've got the situation that has come up to the table. Why, young folks? I mean, young folks. We, we've got we've sort of like gotten together, sort of young folks, if you will. And uh, in the past, that wasn't the case. That was a, definitely a segregated kind of a situation. But young people, we got young people, a lot of times they're middle class at this point in time and whatever, and sort of like, they've got open-minded. But the bottom line is that they don't, wanna, they don't have to deal with the subject matter. You know, they, they can just kind of brush it up. What's the problem? Everybody's equal. We had affirmative action. Everybody made money. What's the problem here We now? won. You, we won. Right. There's no problem. Right. But the fact is we still have this issue. Mm. And, you know, and I, I still say that from the standpoint of an international standpoint, and I've been around the world, too, as a result of the Marine Corps and whatever, I still want to come back home because I consider this a home. Mm. I fought for it the whole nine yards. So I'm, I'm making it, it, it. That's a fact. So what we need to do now we, is sort of like looking for a needle in a whole stack haystack right now. People are trying to figure out how stack. do we get here. Yeah, that's, that's a whole stack too. That's, okay. You watch the Western words now. I got, I got, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I got to do the front part because I'm not going to get on after this. I got Teresa DuPay and Joanne Bowman. Here. Both strong. Hardesty. Strong, Hardesty. Hardesty. But she, but she understands that, that age factor. She's Bruce, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it for years. But, but the bottom line is that um, I'm just kind of giving you a little entree aspect of it, which I think is, is good because too often we tend not to translate. You, That's get, right. you get things all thrown out at you from a this to this to this to that. And I'm giving you just Bruce's deal. Just and right people up front. think this is new. Yeah, yeah, right? new. They it, think that this it, is like a phenomenal it, thing right. that that's just right. happened that's, because that's of the right. last election. It, exactly, right? exactly. And you know, and I'll tell you what, and I'll just get right down so these, these folks can do what they have to do. And in fact, I mean, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, well, what, what, what am I going to do today? Mm. And this whole thing kind of just started up late mm. with the Confederacy flag. Mm. And there's a little history there that talks about the Confederacy flag. Right. And now all of a sudden we got, we're into protesting, and we're into divide, we got, we, we got the KKK, we got the white supremacist. And these logos, these, these, these brands were, were, were known, well known 
right. and from our history. That's part of our history. That's right. And so the only way we can get out of this thing, we need to talk about it. Right. Because I'm concerned. I'm, I'm, I'd like to interview everybody for that matter, <laughs> to give them the opportunity to share their thoughts. Right. And so that's where we are today. I had an opportunity to read, pick up the our only state newspaper, mm. which is the Oregonian. Because it yeah. reaches out to a whole bunch of folks, and by the way, I would Couple suggest of days a week. that's right. I would suggest to you that, that for those of you, you you can get this article that I'm getting ready to talk to you about. Uh, it's uh, it was in the opinion column of the Oregonian. It was Confederate stat status must come down. Confederate statues must come down for nation. For nation yeah. to heal. Yeah. Okay. And it was it was written by Eugene Robinson, who's, yeah. who's been an author for many, many years. Yes. As a it was a beautiful article. So I would suggest very strongly, if you have some time, Google it and pick it up, okay? Yeah. One way or the other. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about a little of that. And I've got say I've got two individuals who are well read, well read uh, well, well known in many ways and whatever, and so the bottom line, we're gonna have this discussion, okay. and I'm gonna let them do most of that talking. So, so we, to begin with, I I shared this with Teresa, and I said, hey, Teresa, would you mind picking something out of that article that we can maybe start this conversation? And then naturally, you've got Joanne Joanne Hardesty, who's right. here with us right now. She happens to be president of the NAACP, and naturally, I'm sure that's on the front, <laughs> that, that that's on the major plate if you will, in discussions Absolutely. with the organization. And this is a local organization. That's right. And the state of Oregon, how it affects her. And, uh, and if, again, if you want their background, you can Google them. Because I couldn't read enough about their <laughs> resumes, about what they're doing. But in all due respect, uh, uh, Joanne, in all due respect, was at one point in time was a, a representative, mm. a state representative from, from Portland, right. if you will. And Teresa has written a number of books. Mm. And... Uh, her husband has, has edited all her books because she needed help along that line. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and Don, by the way, her husband just graduated. In fact, he was he was a senior citizen. In fact, he was the oldest person. He was the oldest, he person. Was the oldest person that graduated in the last batch. They mentioned him in the PSU. In this, um, uh, oh, congratulations! Program. Yeah, That's yeah, very yeah, cool. Not by name, but yes. they mentioned his yes, name. Yes. That's and, very nice. And, and I, I'm so proud of him because I tutored him during, oh, that, nice. whole, during that whole time. Mm -hmm. I tutored him. Oh, uh, because of your support, he yeah, was yeah, able to make that. Yeah, I was more articulate than uh, you. <laughs> So but, maybe you ought to read that piece so we yeah, can just okay. jump in because okay. otherwise so, we'll we go. be out of time. Yeah, that's I'm right. Actually, I'm going to get Dawn on. <laughs> I'll keep okay, it short. Go on. Let's but go. The article is called Confederate Statues Must Come Down for a Nation of Healing. It's by Eugene Robinson. Um, and I'm just going to read the last paragraph. Sure. As societies have done for millennia, we erect and prominently display likenesses of figures we admire. When citizens no longer admire the person being honored, they should haul the statues down. They can go to museums or onto the scrap heap of history where the Confederacy belongs. And so this brings up a really good point that Joanne mentioned earlier. What do these statues represent? Mm -hmm. That's a really mm -hmm. good point. Okay. What do they represent? Right. That's why they should come down. Okay. Right. Right. Now, Joanne, we're going to jump to you real quick, and then we're going to go back and forth. But being the president of the local chapter of the NAACP, I'm sure you've been having discussions about all that stuff that we talked about. In where Absolutely. are you guys? Can you just bring us up to date in terms of how you're presenting that to the, to the masses or to the membership? Absolutely. Okay. And we had a long conversation yesterday at our general membership meeting about just this rise in white supremacist activity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the symbols of white supremacy and the KKK, yeah. including the Confederate flag, mm -hmm. including the torches, including what happened in uh, 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 Charlesville, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what's been, what's become okay and acceptable is that these symbols of hate and this hate speech has become public. Now, it never went away, and especially in Oregon, because of Oregon's long history around racial supremacy, mm -hmm. uh, a white supremacy, I should say, uh, from 1846 on, Oregon passed its first law in 1846 that prohibited black people from living in Oregon. Mm. And if they uh, disobeyed that law, they had 50 lashes in the public square. Mm. This was before we were even a state. We wanted to make sure black folks didn't live in Oregon, right? So the NAACP yesterday had uh, three outcomes from our conversation. One was that we are, we are very concerned uh, that uh, we keep allowing um, hate groups to get permits and get police protection yeah. to march and to spew racist rhetoric in the streets of our city. Right. And what we've had is a total silence of elected leaders, 
at the state level, yeah. at the regional level, and at the local level. Yeah. And when I hear people say, well, there's nothing we can do because they have the right to free speech, I say, uh, I have to be polite. I say that is not true. Mm -hmm. Actually, there is a huge difference between free speech and hate speech. Mm -hmm. And we demand, quite frankly, our elected leaders to be very clear mm -hmm. that when people practice hate speech, that they be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Mm -hmm. That we no longer give permits to hate groups to march down our streets mm -hmm. because that is unacceptable mm -hmm. to us as people who live in Portland, mm -hmm. as people who live in Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the silence of our elected leaders. When in both parties. In and both just, parties. Both parties. And quite frankly, in every position, right. there yeah. is no. This is not right. Right. a parties. Republicans. This Democrats, is not a uh, party right. issue. Right. This right. is a human rights issue. Right. And so, when we say that we're a sanctuary city, state, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. that's BS. Mm -hmm. There's nothing sanctuary about this mm -hmm. city, state, mm -hmm. county, right? Mm -hmm. Every day, black people are being called the N-word on the street. Mm -hmm. They're being harassed on public transportation. Mm -hmm. Even when the police are called, the police come out and make an assessment and decide that it's the black person who's the criminal right. rather than the white person who actually has attacked them or called them racially inappropriate things. And a good, and a good example of that is, um, is uh, the young lady Demetria, on Demetria. Ne uh, Demetria Hester. Yeah. And Demetria and was at our NAACP she meeting She was at the meeting yes. yesterday? Yes. Okay. And, she's, and she told the membership her story. Okay. And you can Google, by the way. You can, yes. you can Google her name. Right. There's Demetria. How do you yeah. spell that? Demetria. D-E-M-E-R-I-T-A. Okay. Demetria, what's the last name? Hester. H-E-S-T-E-R. H -E -S -T -E -R. Yeah. Okay, yes. you can Google that and get that. You know, it was in the Oregonian. It was, in, it, was in, it was It was a good interview, but we, like you were saying. We ultimately had her participate in a press conference mm -hmm. because we'd been waiting for Mayor Wheeler yeah. for six weeks yeah, well, I, to I, pull I, the police... <laughs> The after action report from the officer who was called to that TriMet stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I keep saying, had the public safety system worked for Demetria, mm -hmm. those people would not have been murdered, mm -hmm. and that third gentleman that. would not have yeah. been injured, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people say and that. so the question is, why did the public safety system not work for her? And so what I've seen mm -hmm. in these white supremacist marches is that the police protect the white supremacists. Not the rest of the public. And if you look at some of the videos of Jeremy Christian, uh, Christensen, whatever his name is, yeah. if you look at some of the videos previously before the killings, you can tell that a lot of those police officers that are on scene, there's several videos of him, they're not they're not doing what they should have. No. They're protecting him. They're letting him feel emboldened. Well, excuse me, were they you black know? officers? Because they don't, they're not supposed to be. These yeah. were officers of all different colors who have a blue uniform, I'm not right? To, I'm not and so crazy, what I find <laughs> problematic yeah. is regardless of the race of the officers involved, if they are public safety officers, the expectation is when someone is under attack, yeah. that they will be there to protect yeah. them. And so yeah. I don't really care what race they are, but the fact that they have chosen to take the side of the white supremacist. So in Jeremy yeah. Christensen's case, he had a march in my neighborhood on 82nd Avenue, oh. escorted yeah. by Portland police officers, mm -hmm. and the quote was they wanted to keep him safe and his group. Right. He showed up with a baseball bat. I was at right. that group meeting. Right. I was at that group. Can you imagine a Black word. Lives Matters hey. leader showing up with hey. a baseball bat hey. and the police say, could I please have your baseball hey. bat, rather than right. actually attacking them right. and arresting Tackling them and yeah. shooting them yeah. and harming them, right? Well, so we, the public, have to demand, excuse me yeah. for a sec, we, the public, have to demand that the police do their job yep. and, and that exactly. our elected leaders hold them accountable when they don't. And, and the thing about Demetria Hester, the thing about her case that's really important is she was assaulted by Christensen yes. with and a water bottle that made her bleed. She was bleeding from her eye. That's assault. And if they hadn't arrested him on scene, they should have put a, 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 a PP, mental, mental health hole. Yeah, they yeah. should have put a, a, you know he some kind of an alert to have him arrested in the but future. What about the forty-eight hour deal? I mean, that's over now. That police officer. We still haven't gotten the report. Remember? He I was still know. An and I meet with oh, Mayor Wheeler every yeah. two weeks. He's, and every two that's weeks, been a long time. I ask, it's been a month and a well, half. What happened in forty-eight? Uh, well. 
supposedly. So here's what you know. I, I, this is the games that are played inside City Hall, right? So I go. Sure would like to see the written report right, exactly. yeah. that that officer made paper, before he went home exactly. right. that day, right? Yes. Two weeks later, I go back to my meeting with the mayor and said, well, where's the report? Uh, Maurice Henderson, his chief of staff, says, well, I talked to the officer, and the officer said, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't ask you to talk mm -hmm. to the officer. Mm -hmm. What I asked you was to give me a copy of the written report that he is supposed yeah. to sign right. based on the Department of Justice settlement agreement before he went hours. home that night, yep. right? Yep. Um, and so it's been six weeks. I'm still waiting. So because we've been unable to get it from the mayor, who is the police commissioner, we uh, invited her to have that press conference. And if you notice, the, the police response is, A, they couldn't find him, and B, she couldn't identify him. And both of those are bald-faced lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it, what it shows to to me, I only recently learned about Demetria Demetria Hester, and the reason is because I have a hard time with with the news. It's really depressing, and I go between periods of watching the news and just shutting down the news and not mm -hmm. keeping up. So I only mm -hmm. recently learned, like five days ago, um, what it shows. The fact that she was assaulted, the fact that she was injured, the fact that she was bleeding, and they didn't arrest this guy, that is an encapsulation of the racism of the de that is inherent in the department. Mm -hmm. Things need to change. Because if they had done their job, if they had arrested him, if they had put a PPB out for his arrest or whatever, those two men would still be alive. Mm -hmm. You know, a f both of them, you know, the one man was a father with four children, right. you know, four young children. They'd still be alive. I would hate to be any of those police officers involved in not doing what they should have done. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because they're going to have to live with that. That's right. You know? Well, in all due respect, one of the, I guess the oldest one, one was a, he was military. Right. And he was married to a Vietnamese. Right. Because he brought her back from Vietnam. Right. right. Okay, that was the father. Right. Yeah, Rick and he Best. Was, they were having problems with racism Rick right. within Best. their own yeah. in Beaverton. Yeah. 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 I remember that piece because I, I, I did a little yeah. bit more research on that, that right. aspect yeah. of it. And so, uh, and, and then another little piece about that deal was that they really were, the, the officer, who, when he showed up, he was challenging her. Right. Oh, as, yeah. why, what are you doing out so late at night? And, and, she was, and, she'd get off of work. just walked away. Yeah. She well, got off work, and he's asking, why are you out so late? Well, she got off work, you yeah, know. Yeah. Asked her for an ID. Yeah. Asked her where she was going so late. Where was she coming right, from? Right. Why, why are you on this train? Um, and, yeah, and they interviewed him. They interviewed yeah, him, yeah, yeah. and then they let him leave. Yeah, right. Yeah, let right? Him right. Yeah, so, let yes. Him uh, so, I mean, I think it is the responsibility, quite frankly, of white Portlanders to be in the lead to eliminate the white supremacist and KKK activity that is so prevalent in this community right now. I keep getting asked, and the NAACP keeps getting asked to come to these rallies mm -hmm. that are supposedly uh, against the white supremacists. And the well-meaning white people who are putting those rallies together don't understand how right. sa unsafe it right. is mm -hmm. exactly. for black people right. and immigrants and refugees mm -hmm. and Muslims right. to show up at those right. places. Mm -hmm. right. I was asked to MC a um, anti-racism event about a month ago on Sunday downtown at the uh, War Memorial statue. Mm -hmm. The same day the white supremacists were rallying a half mile away. Uh, I showed up only with the understanding that if this was a nonviolent direct action that was family friendly, that was not about tearing stuff up, yeah. uh, would I participate? And I made sure that the people that were there share that value, mm -hmm. right? And so the people who showed up, the Antifa folks who yeah. show up in all black and faces covered, mm -hmm. they left, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they that, knew, that wasn't they knew there. It wasn't they knew there. You. Well, they knew you. right. They, I mean, and they respected the fact yeah. that this is what we were there yeah, for, right? right? right and if right, that's right. Not what you're here for. Right, right, they right, left, right? Right, right, right? But we found out later. We heard that the white supremacists were marching towards where we were gathered, right? Um, and of course, we're like, we had a safety plan, thank goodness, in place. Mm -hmm. And so we had Reverend um, Kalanji uh, lead a song and lead us across the street. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, we finished our program. And I was standing on the corner talking to a gentleman from Australia when I saw the police vans pull up. Now, we're, we're done. Uh, they pull up. And, of course, they drive onto the lawn of the waterfront because they can't park like regular people, right? Uh, they sit there, and they make this announcement that sounds like this. 
And then, so after they do that, they never disband, right? They, uh, they sit there for a couple of minutes, minutes and then they take off, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Later that night, I hear on the evening news that Homeland Security and Portland police were sitting watching these two groups beat the daylights out of each mm -hmm. other, right? They had sticks and chains and they were bloodied and they sat and watched them. Yeah. Could you imagine a Black Lives protest <laughs> that actually started beating up on another protest and the police would just say, oh, we're just going to take pictures and see what happens, right? right? And so it is clear to me that Jeff Sessions, Attorney General, has given the police some directions that it's counter to what we in Portland want, mm -hmm. right? And what they've said is that these are your friends, these white supremacists, these KKK, these people who are sprouting hate. Well, right? in, in all due respect, let, let's be realistic and let's get down to the meat. In all due respect, Trump, our present president, actually ran on this will, platform. With this base. On this okay, platform. With that platform. Yes, yes. And typically, like any politician, right. once you win, right. you got to deal with the people your you, you relate to, the, your base. Right. And he's been doing that. Yes. And, and to a certain degree, it's, it's why we are here today discussing this issue. Right. Because had he not identified with that base, we'd be sitting up here doing the same thing, complaining about et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and on and on and on. But there is a difference, right? And I agree with you. I think the big difference is the fact that there are a lot of woke people today who mm -hmm. thought America had advance, right? right? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. uh, there were a lot of people who believed that we were an inclusive society, yeah. that we were welcoming, yeah. that anybody that right. worked hard enough would be successful, mm -hmm. right? There are a lot more people today that know that simply isn't true, <laughs> that in the fiber of America, right, yeah. is racism. It's yeah. built in, right? And we in the Pacific Northwest, we have that disease called Pacific Northwest niceness, right? So <laughs> yeah. we never ever directly talk about race or racism mm -hmm. or how it's impacted. And so nowadays I talk about outcomes, right? So if 30 years of progressive leadership in Oregon hasn't changed the outcome one iota for Native Americans, yeah. African Americans, Latino Americans, not one iota, what, whatever you look at, Whatever social determinant of health, whether it's education, home ownership, business right. ownership, right. Uh, environment, I mean, whatever you look at, the needle hasn't moved once in 30 years. Well, well we have less um, yeah, people of color in North and Northeast Portland, uh, African American and Native American homeowners now than we did 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? when uh, 20,000 black households were dislocated from that. inner Northeast between mm -hmm. 2000 and 2010, yeah. we didn't have a housing crisis then. Yeah. We only got a housing crisis when white middle right. class folks started being pushed out of Northeast Portland. Yeah. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, we got to do something. And you said 20,000 households. You mentioned on that other show that 75% of the new housing is lux it's luxury. Right. Yeah. So, who are we building for? 75% yeah, right. of construction today are luxury buildings. Who are we building well, for? Well, gentrification is acceptable now in the media. Think about it in communication. When they, they say, oh, gee, it's being gentrified. Okay, right. so where's the leaders? We're the ones that are saying, who has the opportunity? Right. It's like saying, who signed the order? That's right. See, who signed the order? Right. Where are the leaders? Right. Where's the mayor? Where's the governor? Where are the representatives? Where right. are the senators? Mm -hmm. I mean, you go on and on and on and on. And, you know, we know all these folks. Well, we, and know. you know, Bruce, you and I, for <laughs> almost 30 years, have peeked into yeah. how the city of Portland oh, yeah. does contracting. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> and we know how they hide oh, yeah. oh, the yeah. outcomes. Oh, yeah. And what we know today is black people get zero contracts right. from the city of Portland, yeah. right? But they hide it in the minority women emerging small business pool. When you have them decouple uh, de uh, it, yeah. and because I told the mayor, I said, I want to know how many black people got a contract. I want to know how many Native Americans got a contract. I want to go across the board and know specifics. You know what he told me? The city of Portland has had the software to do that for a decade, and they've never used it. Mm. So who do they represent? Mm. Well, you yeah. know, well, as you know, I, I had the American contract. Remember that trade little publication that I was putting oh, out? Oh, right, right. Well, my thought was to put out on an annual basis standpoint right. the recipients of the, of the, of, of the business. Right, because, we should. And after a while, you know, all of a sudden uh, uh, the ads were cut off, all that other good stuff, and I put it, I had to put it out of my pocket. It was all out of my pocket. You know? And again, there was a cost. So it is an issue. But let me go back to that point from the standpoint that it's still on and it's right. big time and whatever. Right. It's, but it's, but now it, it's in your face, right? But it, but again, the, the whole revelation again started when, in all due respect, when Obama was elected president. Yes. With a black face. Yes. 
And he yes. was denied the fact that the man was even born here. That's right. That was another right. issue that was made. Thank you, Donald Trump. Yeah. Right. But, but, but my point is he brought it up. Okay, right. fine. Right. But the fact remains. But then he didn't. Then he blamed it on Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Right. But, 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 imagine <laughs> it, but imagine if that was a Native American. That right. was a, That's and right. And they do have a whole bunch of Native Americans, but yes. they don't tell you they're Native American. No. Okay. But what if, what if it was an Asian? Right. What if it was Japanese? What if it was Chinese? You, you see what I mean? I, what, think, what I think the election of Trump is a symptom of what's wrong with America right now. But it's good that he brought it up. It, had he not been there, well, in all due respect, it, it, had he not, because no man's an hour, trust me. It's like anything. He didn't vote himself in, whether it be by the, well, whether it be you, by the masses believe, or the other group. You believe we actually have a fair and just voting system. I no longer believe that is so Joanne, in give me a break. Now, this is America. I, exactly. This is a very I fair know. situation. It is America give me a break. where we have voting machines that don't have paper trails <laughs> in right. only Republican states, right. and we're supposed to trust. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still, in 2016, if you're black, you're likely to stand in line for five to seven hours to cast your vote, yeah, yeah. which if you're white and privileged, you don't stand in line for longer than five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. and I think you get cupcakes and, and trumpets uh, right. and cookies, right, when you go to vote, right? When you are black and poor, you are disincentivized from voting. How many, how many laws were passed that said you had to have an ID to vote? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. I thought our goal mm -hmm. was to get as many Americans to vote as well, possible. That, but that doesn't happen in Oregon. Well, the good news about Oregon is Oregon <laughs> is really a national model. There are a couple of things we do well. You smile when you say I that. I do. Though. It is a national model. When it comes to voter access, right? We have voting. You can go and register at DMV By mail, you know. and be registered yeah. to vote, right? Mm. The day you get out of prison, you can register to vote, right? Okay. I mean, that, that we should be proud of that. We should be selling that all across the country, right? And quite frankly, you can sit in the comfort of your home and vote. Without yeah. people like all in your personal space, right? Mm -hmm. We have that privilege, right? Mm -hmm. Every every uh, voter in America should have that privilege, okay, right? Okay. Yeah. Every American should be able to trust that when they cast a vote, it's cast for the right person. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was. Okay. But uh, let's assume it was. If it was. And then there's the whole issue of the popular vote. I think that's crazy. Yeah. Now that's another whole. Yeah. I don't know another hour of Bruce's <laughs> show. But let me. But all I know that it was the other way at one point in time, and then the, then the Congress changed it and went the other way. Well, I you mean, that when you have people with a self-interest redrawing the district lines, but that was happening. We get surprised. On, on both sides of the party. On, I, both sides. Of the I island. have not. Both sides. Down. The These did it one way. I don't way know why you keep having to say that because I've never said that there was a good party or a bad party. Well, I'm helping you. In out. my mind, they're both bad. <laughs> and I'm helping because you they have not done the uh -uh, job I'm that they've out. been elected Please. to do. Yeah. Right? I, so, I'm, I'm disappointed in both parties. Yeah. Too. I mean, I I, I hope that the Especially Democratic the Party gets its act together. I don't expect much from the Republicans, and they have lived up to. That well, over and here. over. They've lived up to that over and over. <laughs> yeah. I can't get but elected though. I believe that uh, the symptom is is the fear that white men are experiencing yeah, yeah. who are accustomed to having power, yeah. who realize that America is getting browner and browner and browner. And within the next by 2030, the majority of Americans will be brown, not white. Mm. And so I believe... But don't you think that fuels the fire, though? I think this is what we are living now is that fear, right? Yeah. Because the fear is, will they treat us like we've treated them? And they should be fearful if you, that's... You think it would be just the opposite once they, it becomes all brown? Will they basically act the same way as... That's what the fear is. That's why what, you got What do you think in your estimate? What, you think they... I think that we have always been much more forgiving and much more graceful than we've been treated. Are you suggesting that young, that young black today feels like you and I? I'm saying and that we are enough? not monolithic, and I think the feelings are all across the board, just like you are, a staunch Republican. And I, what you put the staunch on me? But wait, wait. And I actually <laughs> left the Democratic Party. Oh, but I came, did too. I right? did too. Because I thought if you have the presidency and a supermajority in the House and the Senate, you can't do anything. I, you don't deserve my support. Well, mm -hmm. in all due respect, I'm a registered. Don't matter. <laughs> I'm a registered libertarian, oh, okay. but my point is, but I am still a Lincoln Republican, so to speak, mindset-wise. Okay. Because that's the history. Right. That's right. where it all starts. I hear. And all we have to do is just go back to that history and just start. Hey, just start talking about assimilation. But we're in a great period right okay, now. Okay, good. I think it's great. Oh, before one last thing. Uh, now the membership. It's just an all-black body, is it not? Not at all. You uh, the NAACP, 
in Portland has been around for 104 years. Yes. And it's always been multiracial, multi-generational, I multicultural. Didn't, I didn't know that. I may have to join. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to check with <laughs> Cynthia and make sure that uh, your check cleared. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, a mild deal, we are assimilating in, 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 that, in that aspect of it. Very important. That's the Wonder fabulous the thing about a civil rights organization. Can you imagine 104 years ago in Oregon, a group of people, oh, yeah. a multi diverse group of people coming together going, you know what we need? Right. We need a civil rights organization. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. On my worst day, I think, it has to be better than their best day mm. yeah. 104 years yeah. ago, mm. right? Who, who organized the first, when, when they, who, who got that first brand here? Uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to be able to pull that. Check that out. Pull that out next I time. know who it is. I just am not able to pull okay, it out at good. the moment. That'd be good. That'd be good. Well, J.D. Look, Chandler look, probably knows about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, look, we, we sort <laughs> of run out, <laughs> we, we, we run out of time aspect of it. I'm going to give Teresa the uh, idea to, to communicate on the other end at another level because she's that linguist piece. And so I'll let her fall up and, and I want some <laughs> feedback. I'm truly want to have Don involved in that process too. All right. Okay. But well, anyway, it's been a pleasure, this, this has been great. Just sit right where you are. All right. And we're going to take a short break and then we're going to continue the program. Sounds like a plan. Okay. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels, on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back again to the Oregon Voter Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host and, and co-host. He's got two co-hosts here. Right? I've got Teresa, Teresa Dupay, and, and now Renee has been doing some stuff in the political arena. It's kind of interesting, you know, with the Voter's Digest, you know what I mean? We got, such, uh, we got such a diversity, if you will, in our electoral process and our political process. We got all kinds of parties, and actually we still have the two major parties. And Republican and Democrat aspect of it. We're getting ready to get into. Uh, we're getting ready to get into, uh, if you will, our political, uh, our political time period, if you will. And that's going to be a fun time. Boy, I tell you, I can't wait for that day. Gee whiz, this day. So we thought we'd invite Renee here today, and it kind of. She's been dabbling in, in politics for a long time. We've been knowing one another for a long uh, time. A bit. Quite a bit, yeah. And she's she's joined various parties and whatever, and yeah, I've tried them all out. She's tried them all out. She's tried, and she has good things to say about all of them. She thinks they're, they're very attractive. But yeah. anyway, they know how to organize people. They, they, so, so, so what we're going to do? Go. We're going to we're going to talk a little bit about politics along that particular line, and just the, the whole election process, etc. And because, in all due respect, the public needs to know that we need to educate the public about the fact that we're looking for good leadership. <laughs> and that's really, what, that's really what we're looking yep. for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so what we're going to do, we're going to spend some time talking about uh, the election process. And one of the things I want to make sure we, 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 we touch bases a little bit on is the, because uh, when, when you think about the election process, the electoral process, that's right, you got the fundraiser, you got the funding, you got to be funded, and the media. They play a major, major, major role in that in this in this business aspect of it. Yeah. And then naturally you've got the, the various parties and they've got their own, if you will, their own brand, if you will, this, that, and the other. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Let's start off, in all due respect, and you've been around that before too. I think what we ought to do, let's start off with uh, let's start off with the politics of, of the various parties and you've got some ideas, Renee. Talk to us. 
Well, for me, it's, it's, it's gotten to the point where, okay, now I just recently, finally, I left the Libertarian Party because party politics is all about who's going to be on top, who's going to win. Okay. It's not about servicing what the needs of the people are and, and having liberty. Mm -hmm. So for me, I went back down to the Boston, bottom base of the pyramid and started looking at, at the possibility of just working with people. With people. And establishing, because look, no matter if you get rid of every single person in the government tomorrow and you replace them with everybody you like, I don't care what flavor you are, but whatever people you like, mm -hmm. within two years you're going to be back to the same crap hole. The reason is you still have the same people voting, you still have the same principles going forward, you still have the same ability to manipulate people in the media. So we're going back down to the base of the pyramid, and the base of the pyramid is the average individual human being. I thought they had accommodated it from the standpoint of it being an independent party. Wasn't no, there is a, there, there's an independent party, but it's a political party. And now in the state of Oregon, and only in the state of Oregon, if you are not in a party, you're not called independent, you're called non-affiliated. Uh, Oregon is the only state I know that has non-affiliated. But, but does that fall in, and the non-affiliated, does that fall in what you're talking about? You well, basically, I think what people? I'm seeing is people are abandoning parties because Even they're the not affiliated. Yeah, well, the, the, you gotta, you gotta the be a independent. Party. Well, no, you don't have to be. You can be non-affiliated, which means I don't want to. I don't want to subscribe to any party. You just vote. Yeah, I'm just voting. I'm registered. I'm registered and as a, a non-affiliate. You, you get a ballot just like everybody else. Okay. And all you say is, but you don't get to vote in anybody. You don't get to vote in the Democratic primary right, right. or the Republican primary. Right. Mm. Okay. That's the only difference. But then libertarians don't get to vote in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. What about the Green Party? The only the people in that party. See, the Green Party is a minor party. So you have two things, right? You have major parties and minor parties. And they operate by different rules. The major parties, the two major parties, get to have their candidates for the people who talk about the rules of the party on the ballot. Minor parties have to elect their candidates who run the party themselves. Mm -hmm. However, they can be on the ballot when it comes time for election because they have their, quote, representative from that party on the ballot. Okay. Okay. If you are an independent, that's a party. But if you are a non-affiliated, I'm not sure what the rules are in a partisan race about you running as a non-affiliate. I guess you could. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Mm -hmm. But still, you don't have any backing, unlikely, that you would get so you're saying So you're saying that there's a block of folks that didn't relate to all of this piece. They're just sitting out there. Yeah, and it's growing and getting larger and larger and larger because everybody is looking at the parties and going, this is, doesn't represent me. I don't like what they're doing. They're not going in the direction that I feel is of value or is going to accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And people are abandoning these parties. And you got a bunch of folks that are sitting up there trying to yeah. get some sense of direction. The largest growing do. number of people are the non-affiliates. The non-affiliates, not affiliates. Yeah. They don't care yeah. about anybody's party. Any thoughts before? Before she get in this introduction um, piece, and then she well, can just go do her thing. She sounds very uh, knowledgeable about the politics, which I'm not very good at. But I agree that I think a lot of people are leaving both parties. I am very disappointed the, the, in the, the Democratic major parties, Party. Right? The major yeah. parties, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're leaving all the yeah. parties. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. Well, I'm just I've never I've, ne I've never been a Republican, but I I have been a Democrat my whole life. But I'm also really disappointed in the Democratic Party for the last, what, three or four years. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks so, are sitting, yeah. there, sitting down there. Yeah, on and basically you have, what do you have, what you have in party politics is you have, look, there are two kinds of people. I'm sorry, I can only find two kinds of people. Those who want power over you yeah. and those who want you to have power over yourself. That's it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and finally, right. that's a really good you know, I'm it. sorry, there's two kinds. Yeah. So I'm looking at people now and I'm saying, is what this person's proposing going to give me more power to run my life mm -hmm. and make my own decisions? Right. Or, or less. is yeah. it going to give somebody else that power right. over me? Mm. Right. Mm. And that's, you know, and, and we've got three questions. My husband and I have developed three questions we ask about everything. Who decides? If you're going to talk about hate speech, okay, tell me who's going to make the decision as to what's hate speech. Okay. Right. So who decides? Okay. Who pays? And who pays? And who pays? And the third one, who benefits? When you start looking at programs with those three questions in mind, you start going, what? 
Mm. This doesn't make any sense anymore. Yeah. Mm. When you start breaking it down and asking questions like that, then you start saying, well, that's who's making the decision, and they're not even involved. I'm the one who's paying, but he's getting the benefit. Right. Hold on. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's little litmuses, there's little tests mm -hmm. that I think people need to start developing. Yeah. And you're going to share that test. You're going to share that with us. Well, I, I can share some of them. Yeah, I mean, that, that's some so of the yeah, test yeah, right okay, there. Yeah, so you know? yeah, yeah, so, who so what, what do you do? What, what do we do? We got, we got some disenchanted folks that are sitting out there okay. on the side trying to figure out I what should I do? Do I, do, I, do I challenge the party that I'm with? No. Do I be a part of the party that I'm with? No. Do I run for office <laughs> with one of the parties that I'm with? You go to your neighbor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you your start neighbor. talking to your neighbor. Find out who lives next door to you. Find out who, what you have in common with the person next door to you. Find out where your differences are. Because in the long run, when the poo hits the fan, who are you going to rely on? Your next door neighbor. So this is what I'm saying. Go back to the base. Go back to the bottom. Talk to your neighbor. Form your coalitions in your neighborhood first. Even, the, even if they are party affiliated, right? Who cares? If you find people in your neighborhood that you can communicate with, that you can have a dialogue with, that you can discuss things with. This is how you change things. You're not going to change it by voting for anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that isn't going to happen. You do it by finding commonalities with the people in your sphere of influence. But, but at the same time, people have so much fear at this point in time. You know, how do I approach my neighbor? And I know for a fact they've got a lawn sign out there is it right. Democrat or Republican or, right. or Libertarian or this, that, and the mm -hmm. other? How do I approach that person? And Would, because I, I want to yeah. maintain the neighbors, because otherwise they may just be getting all on my butt. Yeah, that's true. And, that, and that's happened. Right? <laughs> that's in that's our neighborhood, heavy. that has happened. That, that's a heavy. Well, yeah, you, ask, yeah. you, you ask yourself, okay, what, do I do? what would I want somebody to come to me with? Right? And for me, you know, people can talk about uh, hate speech and all this other stuff. And as far as I'm concerned, what determines hate speech is your intention, not the words, your intention. So if I say to you, I just love you, you know that I'm about as sincere as a toilet seat, right? <laughs> okay, so my intention, the words are nice, right. Right. the words are pretty. Right. But my intention is pretty sickoid, right? right? And it's an example of 97% of communication is nonverbal. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so for yeah. me, that's how you start. Yeah. You go to your neighbor with the intention. What's my intention when I go to this person? My intention is to make a connection with you, mm -hmm. to find commonality, to find love. But you know, that's a toughie for the average lay person. I mean, we start thinking about, okay, you, you got, got a choice. The way we're living in, at this point in time, yeah, sure that's tough. a toughie. Okay, let me ask you, you which is tougher. You're here or you're there? <laughs> well, let me ask you which is tougher. <laughs> Holding up in your house with a gun because you're afraid of your neighbor? Or banding together with your neighbor even though they're a God person and you're not? Because you know that horde is coming down the street. You gotta, well, you've got to ask yourself I, which, I, is, which is you, more preferable. You brought a point by holding up with your gun. Everybody has guns now. Well, and if, I'm sorry. Uh, Everybody has guns. Who cares? As no, no. far as I'm concerned. No, but my point is that I will shoot you at that door. Yeah. If you come, up here, if you come yeah. across the door and you intend me harm, bye-bye. Yeah. No, no, no. When I say harm, the, under the definition of harm today in politics, if you're, the, if you're on this other party side, I might shoot you. Well, that's to me, is that's where you need to get back to the reality of harm means you actually cause something we can look at. Right. Some physical okay. harm. If you're, if you're, if this is your harm, that's your problem, not yeah. mine. They got a lot of them out there with that problem. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just sharing it yeah. with you. I mean, that's that's a pretty heavy piece. Well, I was, I was in a but meeting. Share with us. Give I was, us I, I was in a meeting the other day, where somebody actually said to me that they considered a word or a phrase that was quote a trigger word for them, right. as horrible, and as violating as actually walking up and hitting them. Which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> well, when you think about it, who has control over your mental hurt? Right. 
I read a recent article by a professor <clears throat> from Sweden who had come to America, a very amusing article about that very issue in campuses in the U.S. Right. And people claiming that, you know, that words can cause them irreparable, yes. you know, traumatic damage. And it, really? And, and, you know, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Right. <laughs> and if that were anywhere near true, yeah. then there would be a lot of Jews who did not manage to survive the onslaught right. of those horrible right. words. Right, I'm sorry. exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's <laughs> just like, come on, guys. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> Get real. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, you know, when I grew up, it was like, six and stones may break my bones, right. but words will never hurt me. Right. Or... I'm rubber, you're glue. It bounces off me and sticks on you. you. Hello. <laughs> wow. What's wow. your problem? Mm. It's right, like, right, right. <laughs> why am I getting upset at a word? Um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot. There's, there's, a lot there's, of there's some, there's some issues with what's politically correct yeah. and PC that yeah. are really yeah. 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 that border on on censorship and uh, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Well, I, I I think there's a real problem in universities across the country with um, <clears throat> with people deciding what hate speech is and then trying to shut down people even if they're not engaging in right. real hate speech. Right. Well, again, you who know? decides? Yeah, who decides? Who decides? Yeah. But you remember them at in the universities, whatever. That was already existing. Oh, not like it is today. No, no, trust me, it was. I mean, maybe uh, where I went. It's, it's really terrible. Oh, have today. you it's seen Silence You Part Two? I didn't see those parts. So, you is know. that a Whoa. documentary? That's it's a short documentary. Okay. It's called Silence You okay. Part Two. Whoa. I'm gonna watch that. If you see that, you will see stuff that's yeah. going on, on campus. You're not gonna believe. Right. Little, little intro, like what? This authoritative attitude it's just of like, you can't say that. Be quiet. Well, not only that, is actually physically and oh, verbally yeah, yeah. beating people down right, right. who have any kind of a dissenting opinion. Right, right. Wow. And right. physically actually a getting aggressive with them. Right. I'm mean, seriously, watch yeah. Silence You. I don't have to sell you on it. You now, can silence, just look you, at can it. Can you Google it? Yeah. Silence, silence You. The, the word you. That's it. Yeah. And then there's a part silence one and a part two, and the part two will scare the crap out of you. Really? Wow. If that's what's happening at Yale University, man, we're in trouble. Wow. Well, that's going on with, with reference what you've got to bring to the table. Okay. For example, and how right. do we get folks to well, one, assimilate? Well, what, one, one of the things I'd like to talk to talk to people about is the concept of contract. And I was trying to find the word so I could look it, right so there. I could read it. Silence you. Silence wow. you, part two. That. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, it's it's. Ooh. Why don't you Whoa! Face me, Facebook me, so okay. we can put that on yeah. and tell people to watch it. And and I want people to start thinking about the concept of contract. Okay. And contract people think pieces of paper. Well, look, long before there was paper, there was contract. So I want you to. I'm going to read the definition of contract from a 1933 dictionary, it's which beautiful. actually still has some yeah. words in it. It's really nice. To draw together or into smaller compass. Now we're thinking contract, right? But it's the same kind of concept. Draw the parts together, wrinkle. Also, to shorten or narrow by drawing together. Lessen, condense, abridge, mm -hmm. to shorten. Um, um, and then it goes on and on with this sort of contraction idea. But then it goes on to draw together or reduce in compass, become smaller, shrink, and then also an agreement. Right, mm. an agreement. So a contract is an agreement between two or more parties for the doing or not doing right. of some definite thing. Right. right. So right. contract means you and I agree to or to not to. Yeah. So that's all the word contract means. And you can have it in writing, you can have it verbal. Now is that acceptable you think? Oh yeah. Like this is piece? this is great because when you have a contract with somebody, that means you have an agreement to do something. Now in business for me when you walk into a store and you say, here's my money, give me the thing, that's a contract. What about politics? In politics, your contract is, um, if it's elective politics, I'm going to represent you and you buy or you don't buy. So that's, again, it's a contract. Okay, yeah, yeah. But in business, what I'd like people to start understanding, that business is a contract when you walk through the door. So instead of making laws about how that contract is going to be done, why don't we just let the people decide how the contract is done? And I, to give you an example, I walked into a store, a uh, marijuana store. Hey, I smoke pot. And uh, <laughs> sorry, it's going to come out any time. Really? So I walked in. He has a do not, I, we, you can't come in here if you have a concealed carry. I walked through the door. I showed him my ID. I do not conceal carry. And I said to him, 
I'm going to tell you how much money you're losing because I'm going to publicize the fact that you have a do not, you can't come in if you have concealed carry and I want you to understand how much money you're going to be losing right. by having that sign. This is how you get people to do what you want them to by their pocketbook, not with a law and not by force. Okay. So I told him, I publicized it on a list that has a thousand people and I can guarantee there is not one libertarian on that list who will buy from that store. Now, how much money are they losing? And this is how you negotiate. You don't like the person who doesn't want to make the cake for the gay couple? Fine. You walk in their store and you say, I'm not buying from you because you did this. And when enough people walk in that store and say to him, I'm not buying from you because you did this, he's going to go, maybe that was a stupid idea. They'll change the name of the change. store. They'll change the name of the store. Well, the thing is that nobody's used force. They can do that. Nobody's demanded anything. Yeah, right. Okay. And yeah. you've done it by market forces. Right, and right, to right. me, this is the only legitimate way to get what you want. So, so you know, I'm listening to what you're saying, and then I'm saying, um, okay, fine. In our last presidential election, there was a contract given out. Well, let's Donald not talk Trump, about elections. No, I don't. no, no, but, 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 but that's kind of that's politics now. We're yeah. talking about politics. I mean, uh, there were 14 or 15 <clears throat> people that ran for office, and each of them had a contract. Mm -hmm. And they said, sign here, fine. And at the end of the day, he wa his contract was, was, was identified as the majority, so he won the peace. So now he lost about the, the popular vote. No, but that, no, no, well, no, no, no. But the fact of the matter is, look, look, by the game rules. No, no, no. Right. Let's just right. put it that if, way. If the score is one nothing, it's still right. the one lost column. Right. The bottom line is that he won the piece. Right. right. So now, what about the definition of acceptance? Yeah. If, if, if that a person would be... has gone through a process, then what? No, I didn't like well, Obama. <laughs> well, I mean, but Donald Trump has 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 made so many mistakes. Yeah, but, I, He's but I'm still so saying. Many people. But but I'm basing on what yeah. she's basically said. It's a said. contract. It was a contract. Mm -hmm. You know, and <laughs> figure out how to get how to either live with the contract or change the contract. Don't shoot your partner in the contract. Mm -hmm. For me, this is not how or you do things. Maybe wait four years and come up with another contract. Yeah. Right. But for, for me, I'm going back to the pyramid bottom. I'm not worried about the top because if you move the base of the people, the top is going to go where it's told. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, that, I don't care about the top anymore. Yeah, but my point is that the contract. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to true. respond to what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? You got my point? And, you know, I've always been, you know, I, I get in politics quite a bit, and I look at a lot of that stuff and whatever, and I'm saying, why well, spend time talking about, I realized there was a contract, it was, we, I agreed to the contract, but now I'm just going to talk about the person who's got the contract yeah, as opposed to saying, okay, How are we what, gonna I'm gonna do, what I'm going to do, yeah. I'm going to make it better right. over here. Right. And then exactly. I'm going to come back at the table again, and then I'm going to do the contract. But most well, What I'm just, hoping for Trump is that some judges make it better by impeaching him. Well, <laughs> well yeah, but that's not going to make but, but, our life better because if the judges do that, well, then it's not okay. Well, then we set okay. up the president. Do you see? understand? We're, the contract. Then there's no contracts. <laughs> It's like, not on any it's like executive orders. Mm -hmm. Executive orders are only supposed to be for the hello, executive department. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently not. Yeah. So once you start this ball rolling, oh, yes, you know, the, we the Internet has a comedy thing on that. About, you know, the, the executive orders that were put in here are get to use, be used by the guy that you don't like. And so people ought to start thinking ahead as to, do we yeah. want to give anybody this much power? No! Right, right, but the right. fact of the matter is, the contract was signed. <laughs> and that's what we got to live with today. You're right. Mm -hmm. But in terms of livability, livability within our society, et cetera, et cetera, right. some folks say, well, gee whiz, this is not what I really, really wanted. Okay, well, fine, but you signed the contract. Right, and then, you know, of course, all, the, all those sides. millions of millennials who didn't vote That's right. helped it That's along. Right. So, so spend the time so. talking about how, you know, things that you can change right. and things yeah. that you feel right. would be would better our livability right. within this country. Then, bang, then all of a sudden the contract says, okay, fine, well, that's this, bit. but then that will have some influence on the implementation of the contract that was written because then I was because that's thrown on the table. Now I'll just give a good example of that in terms of this is just my own view aspect of it. The whole issue with Obamacare. Mm 
Okay. The key is that there's no way in the world they're just going to get rid of it all. Right. And they shouldn't. And, they, they they shouldn't. Won't. and I'm just saying that's what the holdup is. Yeah. But the fact that this this has been a contract yeah. to say get rid of it all. Yeah. So the bottom right. line is, and, right. and right up front, the reason why it hasn't passed is because, it, no, we got to put a few more little inclusions, keep yeah. some stuff in the deal. Yeah. And that will there's go. No, there's no doubt Obamacare needs to be re redone a little bit. However, um, you know, for myself and several other people I yeah. know, yeah. I wouldn't be alive today if I hadn't had a procedure in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-cancerous procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But at the same time, but at the same time, when you, when you do this deal, so then it goes over here with the individual with the contract, and these folks over here are basically the ones that have to either approve or disapprove. Yeah. If it gets down to the point, we're going to pass it based on this, and then let the world know, right? And this, and then, then this, he's letting the world know he's letting the people over here mm -hmm. who basically mm -hmm. signed the contract. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how many folks are having that, had this right. condition, and blah, blah, blah. They signed that contract. They want to keep this peace. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So, so the key is that that's the discussion yeah. that, that I think I, and, I'm hearing you and, saying. And yeah, about health care, I wanted to bring up. Uh, there's a petition out right now to counter House Bill 2391. You got about two minutes. Go keep doing okay. it. Talk, talk quick. What, the, what House Bill 2391 was, nah, 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 we're going to make all these insurance companies pay this extra tax, nah, 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 right? Oh, well, guess again. The bureaucrats were on top of it all. And they put in the bill, oh, and the insurance companies can pass it on to you. So 2391 <laughs> was a flat-out tax on your health care. There's a petition going around right, right now to pull it off. Mm. So I'm advising everybody, sign it, because they did a dirty on you. They taught, They said, we're going to stick it to those insurance companies. Nye, nye, nye. Wait, 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 and are, then they turned around and put in the bill these the are ability. Democrats. These are Democrats. That's looking right. Out for your, your, yeah, your, they're looking out for you, okay? They're looking out for the taxes. <laughs> That's all they're looking out for, the like I said. The money. Yeah. The money. So this is nothing more, 2391 is nothing more than a filter through the insurance companies for more money out of your pocket. So now the point I would make, I, I hear it loud and clear. Now all you have to do is call your local representative who represent you and ask them whether or not they signed off on it. And then they can explain to you why. Well, you can find that out without even asking. No, 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 no. It's always good to <laughs> no. It's always good to ask them. Oh yeah. I mean, straight, straight out, straight out. Because it might be a, there might be a glitch there. You might have read it wrong. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she did. <laughs> Uh huh. I don't think they're yeah. That's why we have. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why we're talking about this stuff right now. Is there anything? <laughs> in there? We got about. We got about 27, 25 seconds. Talk. Twenty-five seconds. Give, give me that. We, you got to come back. Go back, back to your neighborhood. Talk uh -huh. to your neighbors. There Sing you and dance. That's right. That, and make sure you have a listing of all the leaders that you signed off on. Yeah. Right. Is that fair? Okay, so, Renee. This has been great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much As for you, having me. Teresa, here. it's been fantastic. Thanks very much for being Thank a part you. of it. Thanks both of you. Thank you. And we'll talk about this next okay. show that you have to deal. And same thing with you, Teresa. Okay. Fine, folks. Hey, have a good one. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the show. Send it out there. Share it with everybody. No, no. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.